friends and welcome back to my channel. As I announced last week, I'm starting a very exciting new series on my channel, which by the way, I now have a name for. This series is all the info that I could possibly share about creating YouTube videos and videography in general, directed at my best buds, teenage girls. My series will be called K19 Studio. I can't wait to create more content for this series, including blog posts and much more. So make sure you stay tuned for what's to come. I haven't been this excited about a series I've done in a while, so I really hope that you enjoy. So today's video, as I'm sure you saw in the title, is all about a beginner camera kit for filmmaking. I decided to start with this video because I feel like it's a good starting point for a series like this. Before I jump into camera models, lenses, etc., I want to have a discussion about the culture of YouTube surrounding camera gear. People like to discuss whether or not high quality video is required for success on YouTube and this has been a really hotly debated topic um, on YouTube itself, on VidCon panels. Casey Neistat is a well-known proponent of the idea that you do not need to have high quality equipment to make um, good YouTube videos and to be successful. He firmly believes that you could be filming on a potato as long as you're a good storyteller and still get successful on YouTube. And I agree with that sentiment to a degree, but I also think it's a little bit whimsical. Don't get me wrong, I would never tell anybody not to start YouTube because they don't have a high quality camera. What I am saying though is, if you're being realistic, there is some need to have HQ video in order to become successful on YouTube. If you think of all the most successful YouTubers right now, they all have pretty fancy gear. Also, when they talk about the cameras they used to use when they were getting famous, you have to remember that they were doing that in like 2008 and the standards were set a lot lower back then than they are now. But anyway, that's a larger discussion that I just wanted to acknowledge and maybe talk about further in the comments and in future videos. And besides, this video is not talking about what you need to get famous on YouTube because everyone here knows that I am not the person to give you that advice. What this video is about is what you need to be self-expressive not even what you need, but what you could use to make um, creative, self-expressive videos because this series is not about how to get famous, it's about how to create. So let's get started talking about what you could use as your beginner camera kit for making YouTube videos. First of all, use your smartphone. Seriously, iPhone cameras are getting better and better and a lot of people already have this in their pocket so you wouldn't need to go out and buy anything new to start making YouTube videos. If you have access to a point and shoot camera, that's great too. Here are the point and shoots that I have. Now, these are both very cheap cameras. I've never purchased a point and shoot for over $100, and I realize that the quality of these gets drastically higher the more money that you put into them. I've just never been willing to spend more than I've spent on my DSLR on a point and shoot camera. So my first Canon camera unfortunately stopped working after I dropped it while filming during beta, so I moved on to my new Panasonic, which I really like. Despite its thickness, it has a great flip up screen, which makes it really easy to film yourself. And it also has a really great auto white balance feature that has saved me a bunch of times from very yellow rooms. This camera can be a great addition for vlogging to your beginner camera kit, but it could also be your main camera. You can just grab yourself a small tripod and use this to film all of your content. Now we're gonna talk DSLRs. I still feel like my kit is decently beginner and maybe intermediate, so this kind of thing is really not that out of reach for somebody who's really passionate about making YouTube videos and um, wants to learn more about the craft and the tech. I have a Canon T3i, which I film all of my videos on, except for my vlogs, even though some vlogs are filmed on this camera. I've had it since I was in grade 11, which was 2013. It works pretty well, but I'd love to upgrade to the 70D. I just don't have the money to spend on a DSLR right now, but this thing is just working fine. It does the job. This is a great one for beginners to get for a couple reasons. One, it's a few models old, so you can probably find it for pretty cheap. Another great reason is that it has a flip out screen, which is perfect for filming yourself. It allows you to know that you are in focus and in frame, which I hope I am right now. So to anyone thinking about getting their first DSLR, I would highly recommend getting this model. Now let's move on to lenses. I have three, thanks to two very generous Christmas gifts and the kit lens that came with my camera when I bought it. My kit lens is the standard 18 to 55 millimeter lens. This is great for self-filming. Honestly, I use it for all of my videos, even though I have fancier lenses, just because it's impossible to get yourself in focus using anything higher than 50 mil because you have to stand so far away from the camera to be in frame that you can't tell if you're in focus or not. 
So I usually film at 18 millimeters because it's the most wide angle lens that I have and then I know that you can see me and everything in the frame. Then I have a zoom lens. It is a 50 to 250 millimeter lens and I use this a lot for taking photos at events where I'm trying to get candid pictures of people. But I've also used it for video as well. It's great if you're filming like a live performance, which I was just the other week. And if you're using it for your secondary camera, it's great for getting cut in shots of the performer's faces. Of course, it's also good if you're like out in nature and trying to get footage of animals or other things that are far away from you. Finally, I have my 50 millimeter prime lens. This lens is a beauty for any shot where you want to get that perfect blurry background. Because it's a prime lens though, it can't zoom. So that means all you have is your focus ring. There's no zoom ring. So the zoom is your physical position in space. If you want to get a tighter crop on something, you have to walk closer to it. Or if you need more in the frame, you have to walk further away. This can be limiting if you're in a small room um, or if you're trying to film yourself. Because it's a prime lens, it has a very low aperture of like f1.4, which is what creates that beautiful blurry background and it also helps in low light conditions because it allows more light into the lens. I'm realizing now that there are a lot of terms that I'm throwing out here like aperture and prime and some of you might not have heard of those before. If that's the case, let me know in the comments and I'd love to make a videography terms 101 video for you guys so that we're all clear on what all these different words mean. Anyway, that is a brief look at all of my lenses and my beginner slash maybe intermediate camera kit for making YouTube videos. Like I said, this isn't about success. This is about creation. You can start anywhere and make something that you're proud of. Speaking of which, if you ever make a YouTube video with the advice that I give you or inspired by this series or even just at all, I really would love for you to tweet it at me. My username is at Katie Steckley and if you can throw the hashtag K19studio on there, that would be great. I really want to try and start a community with these videos of young female filmmakers who are trying to support each other in our content creation and our growth. So make sure you throw that link up on Twitter. I will definitely check it out and hopefully some other people who are watching this video will check it out too. Anyway, that's it for me today. I really hope you found this video helpful. Let me know if you have any questions about anything that I talked about in the comments below. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it and if you like this new K19 Studio series. And of course, subscribe for future videos all about filmmaking and creativity. Thanks so much for watching and happy creating. Friends, and welcome back to my channel. This week, I'm coming to you with an open letter to teenage girls. I have a message that I want to share with my fellow humans, almost my peers, as of this year no longer.